Today, I am going to be sowing some tomatoes. They are in the kitchen garden section, right at the back of your spring grow on handbook. And I have got two pages of information there for you. Now, these varieties that we had in our grow along shop are called bush varieties and they have a determined height. So once they grow to that height, they will stop and then they will fruit. Unlike the cordon varieties, which will fruit and then grow a bit more and then fruit on that growth and then grow a bit more. These will fruit all at once. So what I like to do to make sure I've got fresh tomatoes all the way to the end of the season is do two sowings. So one now and one in about three or four weeks time. This is my patio pot tomato collection for this year. We've got two for you. This is micro cherry and I have never seen so many fruits on one plant. So this is one plant in a 15 litre container. And then next to it is my top favourite lasagna. This one's ideal if you're growing outside of the patio because it's the most blight resistant on the market. The fruits are so delicious. You don't get quite as many as you do with the micro cherry, can you see? But they are more juicy, more tasty, and a bit bigger. Choice is yours. What do you fancy? This is pretty enough, isn't it, to be a container plant? Tomatoes, there's something called blight, and it's actually already up in the atmosphere, and the rain brings it down, which is why we often grow our tomatoes under cover, because that protects them from the rain. If we have a very wet summer, you'll probably find that you have a very poor tomato harvest because of these blight spores landing on your plants. Now, the tomato varieties I have chosen for you, Lizano in particular, is the most blight resistant variety on the market. So I've made sure that you've got that one. But I've also made sure that you've got tomatoes that you don't have to pinch, you don't have to cordon grow, and you can grow them in pots. So what you can do is if we end up with a wet summer, is you can just slot your tomatoes in their pots in your zippy. That will act as an umbrella against those blight spores. And then fingers crossed, you should have a fantastic harvest. Look at those tomatoes. Now, we grow tomatoes in a polytunnel to protect them from blight spores. Just show you the rest of the garden while we're here. This is just a few packets of seeds, a few dahlia bulbs, and lots of fun growing together. So if you want to join in and make your garden look like this next year, then please sign up because it's just so much fun. Anyway, we were talking about tomatoes. The reason we grow them under cover is it protects them from the blight spores, which could come from your neighbour, not necessarily you. But you easily get little patio varieties like this one here and Lisiano. Lisiano is supposed to be really blight tolerant, so it can go outside. It's only inside because it's been so chilly and I wanted tomatoes. Um, but this one's quite blight resistant, so that could go outside, no problem. But these would easily just go in your zippy. So when you're finished with it, from all your sewing and everything's planted out, it's sitting there empty, could be housing a patio tomato, couldn't it? Can you see, I'm parking them in each corner and then one in the middle. So when they do germinate, they've got enough space to stay in this pot for a good wee while. In the kitchen, I don't want to make lots of mess, so I've got one of these little snappy lids. You can get them everywhere, um, just to go on my water bottle. And I'm because you want the seed moistened, we're going to water from overhead. But if you're in your greenhouse, absolutely, you can just use your hose attachment with a fine sprinkle. Tomatoes like a steady temperature of about 21 degrees to germinate. So if you don't have a heated propagator in your greenhouse, and they'll probably need to sit on that heat mat for a good few weeks, probably a couple of months, and then on occasion when we get a frost, then you'll probably want to start them off indoors, where the temperature is fortunately a balmy 21 degrees at least. That's if the husband allowed you to get anywhere near the remote control <laughs> on the heating. I know that Neil is forever turning ours off going to put it on your windowsill you might want to put it in a little ramekin or something so the water doesn't damage your furniture my tomato in its little ramekin and this looks like a nice warm spot to leave it and it is until we pull the curtains at night we've got single glazing 
which lets all the cold in. So I've got thermal curtains, which keeps the cold out. So you want to be careful that you don't maroon your tomato out in the cold without meaning to. So I think we'll put mine in the kitchen. The seeds will probably take between two and three weeks to germinate on your warm windowsill. But once they do, you're going to need to give them as much light as possible. And that can be tricky. What happens is when a seed germinates, it's packed full of a hormone called auxin. And what that does is it keeps elongating the cells in the plant until it hits adequate light. That's what's responsible for giving us leggy lindas. Now, when you put your seedling on a windowsill, for example, the auxin gets pushed away by the light because it's got adequate light on that side and it goes round to the shady side and elongates the cells on the shady side, giving it the appearance that it's leaning towards the light, but it's not actually at all. What the auxin is actually doing is it's elongating the cells on the shady side so it can reach the light but we know that's never going to happen because it's on the windowsill so the temptation is you just keep twiddling the pot and that does make the plant straighter but it is still getting leggy because you've still got one side in the shade so i'm going to run a video now to show you how you can make a foil reflector which will help balance out the light a bit always had a greenhouse. I didn't always have even a zippy. And like you, sometimes I had to grow my plants on the windowsill. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make a foil reflector, which will just help bounce a little bit more light around your windowsill grown plants. Make them as big or as small as you want. I've just folded mine in half so it stands up all by itself when I put it in front of the window want your piece of foil to be larger than your piece of cardboard so that we can fold it over and make nice neat edges. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my prick stick and I'm just going to put some glue all over the cardboard so I can stick the foil to it and then we'll fold the edges underneath. The good thing about prick stick is if you're quick if it's not quite in position, you can slide it slightly. There we go. Just give it a good old firm down. Look at that. I've turned it over and now I'm adding some glue to this side. And then we'll just fold the foil over and stick it down to make nice, neat edges. We're a million miles away from the window, but you can see already the reflection that's coming from the door onto that plant. Okay, so I've got my controlled experiment. Here's my plant. And what plants tend to do is they tend to lean towards the light. So you have to keep coming in and turn them round and turning them round. But if you add a foil reflector, what will happen is the light will bounce from the window onto the foil on the back of the plant. So they don't lean quite as much as they would have done. And they just get that bit more light. Let me show you. The heated side is going to grow more quickly than the light side, making the plant leggy. So even turning it is not brilliant because you've still got a leggy plant. But can you see, by adding this foil reflector, let me do it again for you, by adding the foil reflector, the light is bounced all the way around and hopefully that will stop the shaded side from growing so quickly and making such a leggy plant. It's not a cure-all, but it's certainly going to help and it's quite fun to do.